Welcome back to another series of Tennis Journal videos. In this series, I'm going to be talking to you and showing you information on match charting, how you can get information from the match court to use on the coaching and training court. So whether you're a coach, a player or a parent, this is going to be uh, ideal for you to get to different methods and tools to gather that information. We're going to crack on. We've got a lot to get through. Uh, first thing I need to do is give you some kind of basic rules about match charting. The first one is that you must know what it is you're looking for. Uh, there's no point in gathering a million different stats and then sifting through them and it's almost like you can't see the wood for the trees. So if it means that you just chart one thing, then that's what you do. So know what it is you want to get out of it. Number two, you have to be able to collate or collect this information roughly in the 20 second window that you will have in between points. Now in junior tennis, they're very guilty of rushing. So you might even have to come up with methods that you can do in five or six seconds. Keep it simple. And then as you get more and more confident, then you can build up and gather more information. The other thing that you have to consider is the tools that you use. So I'm going to use some very archaic tools. You're going to need a pencil with an eraser at the end, and you're going to need preferably squared paper. It doesn't have to be squared, but preferably squared if you're a neat freak like me. Uh, you could use a ruler if you want to be uber uh, neat, but don't worry about that. Now, some of you, when I released that, I was going to produce this uh, uh, series of videos, got a little bit geeky and said, uh, you get apps that can do all this. You, you will start to see that an app can't get all the information. It can get you some good stats and it can get you some scatter diagrams and flow charts and things like that, rally length, but it doesn't give you the real nitty gritty that you actually need once your players are established competitive players. So we're gonna start really simple. I'm gonna start with today's video showing you one thing that you could chart and show you how simple it is to chart it. So let's get stuck in. So we're going to be looking at Patrick, who is on the near side of the court. He's going to serve for 10 points, and we have to decide what it is we're going to chart. So I know Patrick very well. So he has a very big serve. He's six foot three. So we're going to chart very simply if he is in attack on ball three after his serve. Okay, that's we're going to write it down. Attack on ball three. I'm using a Sharpie just so you can see this because if I use a pencil, let me just check. Yeah, you might not be able to see that so clearly. So attack on ball three. This is how simple it gets. We draw a line down the court and we press play. Now, let's say that's one point on serve. Was he in attack on ball three? I'm going to say no. It had a positive outcome, but he wasn't in attack. He was actually going backwards. Now, I've cut out all the time in between the points, uh, but, so I can just go straight on to the next one. But you would have about 20 seconds, roughly, to get that information down. So one tally mark, one cross. Was he in attack? I'm going to say he was. And then I could put a comment down here. Half volley miss. It can be as simple as that. And the key thing is it's up to you how you collate the information. Serve. Was he in attack? Yes. What was better there was he was going backwards and he still was aggressive with the shot. Whereas the ball, the uh, first point, he uh, wasn't.
Was he an attack? Yes, he was. And then I would maybe put body. Miss. <laughs> Obviously. And then again, ace, just because I want to make sure that I know what happened. Another serve. Was he an attack? Yes. Oh, sorry. He was. Then it was half volley. Miss again. Another serve. Was he an attack? No. And I would put counter return. Was he an attack? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say he was, but it needed to be top of bounce. So again, this is me becoming a bit more specific, but there you can see he let the ball drop. So I'll put top of the bounce needed, and then he missed. Which is nice to see because top of the bounce, yep, top of bounce, big tick on that one, just by moving up a little bit earlier. Yep, there again, could have been a bit better on the top of the bounce. And we're, there we have it. So now it's very simple. Uh, obviously, I've taken 10 points to do the math quite easy. But we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 serves. And out of those 10 serves, he was in an offense or attack position. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. How's that working out? Yeah, 8 out of 10. So 80% he was in attack. Out of those 80%, if we look at one, two, three, four, five, out of the eight, he didn't win the point. And then we look at the, the simple notes, half volley, volley, half volley, top of the bounce. Uh, so you could do, you could choose something around the, the movement up at the net. Uh, but if I was being more general, I would just simply uh, choose movement after the um, serve. Yeah. So you can see how easy it can be just to collate some basic information from the court. The most important thing is it has to relate to the player's development. There's no point in gathering information if it's not going to be used. There's no point in gathering lots and lots of information if it starts to kind of cloud the vision or muddy the waters, if you like. So keep it simple. It can be as simple as drawing a line down a piece of paper, looking for the one thing that you have been working on and then just a tick or a cross whatever the key needs to be uh, for you to make sure that you can uh, gather that information really quickly and simply and you can have a little notes column if you like from there if you're the coach then that can obviously be used to feed back to the player what they've done well what they could do a little bit better if you're the parent please do not speak to the player about this type of information because you're not the coach give it to the coaches and if you're a player please start to buy into this idea of gathering basic information from your opponents so when you play them you've got a little bit of a heads up about what they are good at where they struggle uh, that can help you come up with a strategy to play them so next video i will start to unearth a little bit more detail and as the videos go on it's going to get um more and more detailed and by the time we finish the page will look like a russian spy code so if you like this as i said before subscribe share uh, press your notification bell right underneath what you do when you chart i'm really interested i'm a total geek for this stuff so i'm really genuinely interested in what uh, other coaches do uh, share as much uh, information with me as you like okay until the next video 
take care, bye-bye.